Okay, guys. Oh my gosh, I feel like it's been forever, even though it's been a week. I did this makeup look, I would say, like three weeks back, something like that. And I got so many questions on how I did this look, and I, I was honestly a little bit shocked by it. I liked the look, I guess, but like I didn't love it, and I just couldn't believe that everyone else loved it. But I was like, you know what? If you want to see how I did it, fine. So I'm gonna do a tutorial. It is an easy look, except for like some things that are not so easy. By the way, have you noticed? I'm in HD now, bitch. I mean, I technically was in HD before, but I got new lighting, a new camera. You can see every pore on my face. I am super triggered. Anyway, I don't want to ramble too long, so let's get into the video. Okay, so first of all, you can see my skin tag in HD now. She's here. She's part of the family. You already know. Okay, so let's try this again. I'm gonna use this Herbivore Emerald Cannabis Sativa Hemp Deep Moisture Glow Oil. <sighs> that really is a long title. And in case you're curious how much I use, I don't know, it's like this full and then I put like that much. Sorry. You know this channel isn't helpful. Even after I put on my foundation, you'll be able to see how glowy it is. And then I'm going to use my Tula Multi-Spectrum Eye Renewal Serum. I always put this under my eyes because I have been noticing that I've gotten a lot more creasing under my eyes. And it's for two reasons. I think my eyes have gotten drier since I moved to California, but also it's definitely the freaking Tarte Creaseless Concealer. Ugh, I loved that stuff until I realized it's not creaseless at all. Like it's seriously so creasy under my eyes. And I, I don't know if it's because the Miami weather was just like helping it like sink into my skin better because it's so humid. I really don't understand it, but the second I moved to Los Angeles, that shit did not work for me. I'm gonna use this Lucius, Luscious, what did I say Lucius? Luscious brand Spellbinder Makeup Setting Mist. I tweeted about this because I see this on Instagram all the fucking time. It claims to be like the best setting spray and I am gonna do a dedicated video on this comparing it to other setting sprays and how long it really lasts. But before I did that, I wanted to like try it out because I didn't wanna just try it out one day and then tell you how I felt. I wanted to try it out for a long time. So that's a very long winded explanation. I'm gonna put this on my face now. I'm using it as kind of like a priming spray and then I'm gonna spray it at the end as well. I do have to say, has a really strong scent. And the mist is not fine at all, like not even a little bit, but that's my only note so far. Okay, let's continue. I'm gonna prime my eyes with the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion in Eden. I just have never found the need to go and get another eyeshadow primer. Eyeshadow primer is not like one of those things that I just wanna try every single one. Although I did try the P. Louise makeup one, except I ordered it in like a literal white shade, like white like the wall. So I really have never used it because of that. Okay, so for this look, I'm gonna use two eyeshadow palettes. I'm gonna use this Kathleen Lights color Pop Zodiac palette and then this Shannon Rose collaboration with IGXO cosmetics So I'm gonna use these two and from this one the only shades I'm using is Taurus and cancer And so you know, I'm sure you guys have a palette out there If you don't have either one of these that that has similar colors, but I'm just gonna use these because I like them Okay, so I'm gonna go into this beautiful large Cream shade you guys know how I feel about a good cream shade. I want it to be big I want a whole palette of just a cream shade. I mean, technically I could just buy a setting powder and that's kind of the same thing, but no. Ugh, I wanna zoom you in more, but I literally, if I go out of frame again and I can't use this footage, I I'm gonna quit YouTube. <laughs> Let me just zoom you in a tiny bit, okay. That's as much as we're going. All right, so I'm gonna go in with my transition shade. I'm gonna use this color right here. It's called Joy. I'm not sure if you can tell. It's definitely more of like a sandy, peachy color. It's a really nice transition shade if you're like <laughs> as pale as I am. It just lays a good base down and then you could add another transition shade on top of that, but this just like really helps the whole look look really blended in my opinion. Oh, and I'm going in with a Luxie 229 tapered blending brush. This is my favorite brush. It's kind of like falling off the handle, but I don't even care. I'm gonna buy another one. If you have hooded eyes like me and which by the way, I just found out I had hooded eyes. I'm like talking as if I've known it for five years. I just found that out. I don't know. I didn't know what classified as a hooded eye. But anyway, I always notice that like eyeshadow skips here a lot. And it still does even with this, but it's a lot less. And it just helps it go on a lot better to my tiny little eyes. Also, I still get a lot of comments on the fact that I need to blend my eyeshadow further up. And like, how high do you guys want me to go? I'm literally, I mean, it's up here. I want some brow bone space, but like it's blended all the way up there. We want me to go over here. I am starting to blend with my Alamad Cosmetics brush from the first Ojitos Trio. I really, really like this brush for blending. Oh my god, I had to turn the air conditioning off. I'm already starting to sweat. Okay, so now that that first color is down, I'm gonna take the same brush that I used for the transition and I'm gonna go into the Taurus. This is a really nice, like a khaki warm color. I don't know how else to explain it. It's not so warm that your eye is gonna look orange because that's really what I don't want for this look. Surprisingly, I know that's what I usually want, but it adds a bit of 
warmth without being too excessive and it's just it's a really pretty color that's my favorite color from the whole palette and I use it all the time and then I'm gonna go back in with my blending brush I forgot to film a makeup 101 video well I didn't forget to film it when my cousin was here I know I told you guys I was in a film with my cousin but you know we just got busy and we were showing her around LA and all that stuff so I didn't get around to filming it with her but I could still film something like that with my mom the only problem is I really would like for you guys to like Oh my god, you can probably see my sweaty mustache in HD. This is very disturbing. I could film that with my mom. I just want to know what kind of like questions you guys have. Like I want specific questions. So if you have specific basic makeup questions that you want me to answer, like why do we use transition shades or what brushes are the best for this? I don't know. I don't know. You guys let me know what you want, okay? Because I don't want to just make a video. What is this? What is that? Why did I do that? I don't understand it. But yeah, anyway, I want to do a video like that, just asking questions. Why do I have to like take five years to explain anything? <laughs> okay, now I'm going to go in with this color right here. This is called Gratitude. It's not a super warm tone brown, but if I put it next to uh, the Virgo, which is that cool tone brown over there, you can see that it's definitely more warm tone than that. So it's kind of like a mixture between cool tone and warm tone. And although I normally love a good brick red brown, like I always am just warm all around. With this blue eyeliner, I like to keep it just more neutral so that the focus can be the eyeliner and not like an orange eye with blue eyeliner. So I'm just going to take this Zoeva 227 brush. It's kind of like a MAC 217 and just start um, kind of working this color in. And then I go back and forth between dipping into that brown again and then going into my transition shade. I'll probably go into the Taurus again and just kind of like keep blending that out for quite a while. Okay, so it's not as blended as I wanted, which is always the case, but you know, once I add the lid color and then the eyeliner, it might look a little bit okay. All right, so for the lid color, I am going to use the Cancer. I'm just gonna get that with my finger per usual and just like swipe that on. I think the reason why I love putting on such shimmery colors is because my eyes are hooded and it does get so skippy there that like a lid color just hides it all. Oh my gosh, guys, I got a new wedding ring. Mine and Nassim's two-year anniversary is coming up. We're going to Hawaii. I'm so excited. I have never been to Hawaii. I didn't want to go because it's so far and then I have to leave Noah. And that's just like a whole thing. It's like this weird psychological situation where like if I'm a driving distance away four hours, it's fine. Like I used to go to Orlando all the time when I lived in Miami and it was totally fine. But if I'm like a flying four hours or five hours distance, I feel like something bad's gonna happen. Love that about my brain. For the lid. You guessed it. I'm gonna use my J-Cat Prismetal Chrome Eye Mousse in Chrome Galaxy. I actually bought a backup because I have nails now and this is like super difficult to get, like to actually get the product without getting it all under my nail, but I'm still gonna use it. I just bought a backup. And I'm just gonna get a little bit of that and kind of just tap it on because I don't want it to be super glittery, but I do want a wash of glitter because I want a wash of glitter every day. But also I think it looks amazing with the blue eyeliner. Like it really, it makes everything pop. Dude, the first time that I did this look, like with the blue eyeliner, I hated it. <laughs> like I remember looking at myself and just being like, oh, should I just take off my makeup and start again? I don't know why, I felt so weird and like I looked strange. And then I posted a video wearing that makeup and everyone lost their shit. They're like, oh my God, that's the best look you've ever done. All right, so that's the eye, like the eyeshadow done and it's not my most blended look but you know what I did this yesterday and I'm just I'm just tired if I need to blend more like once my lashes are on like if it still looks fucked up then I'll just go in and blend more but if I could get away with not blending then I won't so the eyeliner that I used I have gotten so many questions on this is the NYX vivid brights eyeliner in vivid sapphire I'm not gonna lie the brush is like one of those old-school brushes for a liquid liner that is just very difficult to work with it is very liquidy you have to be super careful and it just takes practice like one day I wanted to put on this eyeliner and it literally took like four times taking off my makeup before I just gave up and was like today's not the day like you just need to work with it and you need to practice with it and it's a little bit frustrating but I'm gonna show you how I do it uh, I'm not an expert it comes out a little bit crooked okay but it is super pigmented and it does last like the whole day I don't have like problems with it peeling off or anything weird like that so I'm gonna just show you how I do it and hopefully in frame this time so I always start by creating like just a regular line not a wing or anything like that so I start in the middle I'll go out to the edge like that and then I go to my inner corner 
And I do it in short little strokes, connecting each stroke. That's the easiest way that I've found. And I start with a thin line. It's definitely gonna get thicker than this because we're gonna put on lashes and I don't put on like black eyeliner. So you need to put it on pretty thick so that it'll show through your lashes, but I like to start off thin. And then the way that I find best to do a wing is to find the corner of your eye, like the very tip of your eye, and go out at an angle. Now I have a scar here that helps me like realize where I'm supposed to stop my wing, but if you don't have a scar, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it just takes practice. Or, you know, it's personal preference how big you want the wing too. And then I'll go back. It's hard to talk when I'm doing this, but I go back like this and connect it straight across. And then I'll go and just basically start evening this out. It's very, very difficult to describe how to do a wing. Like, I never even realized that, but it is very difficult. Um, and I want it thicker than this for sure. <laughs> That's what she said. Also, your eyelashes will more than likely turn blue, so you're gonna wanna go over them with either mascara or uh, like a black liquid liner. I just kinda keep going until I like the wing. <laughs> it's not the best advice, but it's the only one I've got. So I do something like this. Um, I feel like that might be thick enough. Yeah, it's thick enough. So that once my lashes go on, like you still see the blue when I look down and even when I'm looking straight forward. So I'm gonna do this eye off camera because this eye has like these weird lashes. You'll probably see them once I put on my eyelashes. But like over here at the end, they just stick up in a weird way that literally gets like blue all over them. Like it's so difficult to even put on lashes because they're just like so curled here at the end. I don't know. I don't know why I'm like dates. But anyway, I'm just gonna go do that to save some time and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is what it looks like with both eyes done, no lashes on yet. I am gonna put on my lashes, uh, probably off camera too because I'm not so good at that. Basically, I mean, it's not like super even or anything like that, but you know, whatever. You can pick any lashes you want, obviously. You do you, but I'm gonna use these <laughs> that I used yesterday so they have blue shit all over them. But anyway, these are the uh, Lily Lashes Faux Mink 3D Style in Gaia. Did I say that sentence right? The style is Gaia and it's the fake mink ones. So I got this in the Boxy Lux that just came in. I was wondering if you guys wanted to see me unbox Boxy Lux, like maybe one time just to like tell you if I feel it's worth it or not. Cause I know before I got Boxy Lux, I was super, super curious. I just figured that like I had just done my fat fit fun one so I need to like relax on the unboxings for a little bit but if that is something you want to see uh, let me know and I, I will show you but anyway we got this in the boxy lux so I'm gonna put this on as close to my lash line as I can I'm gonna put on mascara first I'm gonna go put these on I'll be right back oh boy so much just happened <laughs> I put on my lashes and I totally fucked up like everything um so I had to like touch up the blue liner and then it got like way thicker and then this one like smeared all over here so I had to like redo the eyeshadow it's so crooked like my blue eyeliner right now is so crooked it's not super easy to put on lashes with this blue eyeliner because when you want to touch up the blue eyeliner or something like that like the lashes get in the way and it's just a mess but anyway this is a uh, liquid liner and I'm basically just going to like push down my lashes and touch the band basically it's not like i'm creating a like a black line i'm just kind of like filling in the gaps where i see a clear band because otherwise every time you look down or you blink you're gonna see that kind of reflectiveness that a like clear glue gives i feel like it looks okay from far which is fine because i'm gonna film like a main channel video and it's gonna be far away but from up close like you can definitely see how crooked <laughs> the blue line is but this is real life shit like that happens whatever i'm gonna attempt should i Ugh. this is like where i debate with myself it's like what if you fuck it up even more okay that's it okay that was crazy. I really wish that there was a felt tip liner that was this bright of blue. And if you guys know of any, let me know. Because I love this color. I just don't love working with it. And also, this is a really old, like, liner. I've had this forever. And so, the actual, like, liner is really dry. So, like, the reason I had to fix this side was because it was, like, crusting off when I put on my lashes. So, also knew it would be a lot better. Anyway. Okay, so I'm going to put on my foundation, by the way. Can you see how glowy my skin still is? Like, it has sunken in for the most part. Like, I feel a little bit of 
oil, but it's not like super greasy or anything and my skin is just so glowy. It's insane. I'm gonna use my L'Oreal Infallible 24 hour fresh wear foundation mixed with my Makeup Forever water blend. I talked about these two in my favorites video and I've still been using them. I love them together. I do put three pumps of each, which I realize is extremely excessive, but I refuse to put less. I don't apply it all on my face, but I do put a good amount because it's not like that water blend foundation is not very good uh, coverage and so I find myself having to put a lot more. Although it's definitely triggering that you guys can see me like this well, I'm kind of happy that you can because now you can see better how the foundation sits on my skin and stuff like that rather than my other camera that was just, it, I didn't put any sort of like smoothing filters. Like first of all, a lot of big beauty gurus use smoothing filters, which I think is like illegal. It's complete false advertising and it makes things frustrating for like the average consumer because it's like I did exactly what you said and my skin looks horrible. I mean, granted, different products react differently on skin, like different skins, but what the fuck? Like, it shouldn't look that much better on you and so shitty on me either. But with this camera and this lighting, I feel like you can really see like the texture of my skin and really detailed of how everything sits. It makes me nervous, but I'm happy about it. I was debating on whether or not to get new lighting, but in the end, I realized what a big difference it is. Like, when you actually pay good money for lighting, it's a lot better. Who knew? I always try to get everything cheap first and then I realize that, oh, it sucks, whoops. In Spanish, we have a saying called Vago Trabajando Doble and it means lazy people work twice as hard. And although that doesn't really apply to the cheap thing, it just like kind of applies to like my personality. Like I just try to do the easiest thing first, which is to get something cheaper rather than like either have to work more to get like new lighting or whatever. And then it always sucks. Like my lighting was horrendous. I looked gray, like and you couldn't see shit. I used to tell my abuela, I was like, when because <laughs> I have always been a lazy bitch. That reminded me that everyone wants me to do a makeup tutorial in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really want that? <laughs> Spanish, a lot of people don't know this, was my first language. I spoke Spanish before I could speak English. But <laughs> I'm such a little bitch that when I went to daycare, like for the first time, it wasn't daycare, it was pre-K. I went there and like three weeks after pre-K started, a girl came in that only spoke Spanish and the teacher asked me to translate like for her to, you know, like explain to her what the teacher was saying. And I told her that I didn't know Spanish. <laughs> I just told her no. Sorry, you got the wrong girl like me. Don't know Spanish. She's like, Jesse, you literally only speak Spanish. And I was like, sorry. I know I speak Spanish. I just all of a sudden hated speaking Spanish. And so then I uh, lost a lot of my Spanish. Like I speak Spanish, I would say fluently. It's just that I stumble over my words when I'm thinking too much. And then there's also like words that I genuinely don't know in Spanish. Like I'm like, what, how the fuck do you say that? Anyway, I'm gonna go in with my e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer. This is my new favorite concealer. It is so good. I realized that with this dry weather and like I said, the Tarte Creases concealer was fucking me up. This concealer does not not crease it lasts all day it has really good coverage it's super easy to blend and it's so cheap i'm so shocked by that not that elf is not good or anything i just i didn't expect it to be that good i'm not gonna lie i am going to set my spots with my aqua assurance compact foundation in ivory this is a brand new one i have not used this at all because i was super running out like i was like using crumbles look at this this shit was holding on for dear life oh wait what the fuck i forgot to put on concealer what is wrong with me before i go in with the powder I'm gonna just kind of cover up any spots that need to be covered. This is the Tarte Creases Concealer. Although not good for my under eyes anymore, it is really good and high coverage for any type of spots on your face. Okay, and now I'm gonna go in with the Aqua Assurance Powder and kind of just go over anywhere that I just covered just to make sure it's super covered. I can't believe when I was um, shopping for the Aqua Assurance Powder because the first time that I got it, it was from Kathleen. Um, so I didn't actually go on the website. And when I did go on the website, this is such like a shit shade range. This is their lightest color, the one that I use. That is so ridiculous. And their darkest is not even dark. Like it's just really, really whack. So honestly, if I had known that before I filmed my favorites video, I wouldn't have included this in my favorites video because I don't want people like to feel left out or to want to try something and then go on the site and realize there's no shade range. Like if I like something, I like it. I understand that, but I'm not going to go like out of my way to say that it's like the best thing if it has a shitty shade range. Cause what if you can't try it? That sucks. So my bad to anyone who went on the site or maybe wanted to buy it and couldn't find their shade range. I really, like I didn't mean to do that. I didn't know they had such a shitty range and I feel like crap. Anyway, I'm gonna use the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder for all over my face. Oh shit, I forgot to set my under eyes. Am I okay? I'm telling you, yesterday, like 
threw me off really bad. I know Mercury is in retrograde. It makes a lot of sense. I thought it was bullshit until my whole life fell apart. <laughs> I'm going to use the flower powder from uh, Beauty Bakery. And I'm just going to get that with a brush. I don't know how I feel about this yet. I'm just starting to try it out. I do have to admit, it's kind of yellow. I don't know. There's something weird about it that I'm not like super <laughs> in love with. Every time I set my under eyes, like my under eyes get immediately like a yellow tint to it. Not so bad that like... I can't use it anymore. That's why I'm still using it right now. I like the finish under my eyes, but like the color changes and this is supposed to be translucent. So it's very confusing. I don't know why that happens, but anyway. Now I'm gonna go in with the hourglass powder. I am a literal disaster. And this Mola brush that um, we just got in the March BoxyCharm. I really like this brush actually. It's really nice and soft. It was time I got a new powder brush because this is the one I was using before. Like this looks like the shittiest powder brush ever and it's really not, but it looks like it is. It's like one of those ones that your grandma used. Oh, man. And I forgot to put on chapstick. My lips are crusty as hell. Anyway, now I'm gonna go in with my Morphe Continuous Setting Mist and just kind of like set that powder. I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna do my brows and I will be right back. All right, you guys know the drill with my eyebrows. I try my best and that's about all I do. I am going to do my lips really quick and I'm gonna use Kat Von D's lip liner in Lolita number two. Kat Von D is a wacko, but she has good lip liners. Does anyone else suck ass at lining their lips? Like if I had to go back to the chonga days when everyone wanted the dark lips and like clear gloss, I'd be fucked. Oh my god, what? What did I just do? <laughs> okay, this is like way more orangey than I wanted it to be. Oh god, and it looks so bad. Yeah, I'm gonna run concealer over it after because I can't uh, line in a straight line to save my fucking life. Okay, I literally can't find the lipstick that I was gonna use. So I'm just gonna go in with Ofra's Long Lasting Liquid Lipstick in Bel Air. This is one of my favorite shades, but it is a little bit lighter than the lip liner, thank goodness. That lip liner should have just never gone on my lips. Oh my god, the bottom of my lips is so crooked. Okay, I'm gonna use the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer in Sunkissed Bronzer with this Zoeva 101 brush that has not been washed in I'm gonna say three years. I just can't remember the last time I washed it, so it might be never, but um, anyway. I just wanna warm up my face a little bit, and I just really like this color, especially in like the spring or summertime. I feel like it just gives you a nice, like, sun, sun kissed glow. Although I really like the bronzer, I always, like, it's just something I do, I always go over with a powder brush because I'm super worried that I'm going to like fuck up and have like weird bronzer lines and it's gonna look ridiculous, so I always just go over it just to be sure. I'm gonna use this. Note Cosmetics bronzer in the color Desert Rose with my favorite blush brush in the world. This is Makeup Shack T95 brush. I just feel like it puts it on blended. This blush is so pigmented, so I'm gonna wipe some off and then go in. It's a really pretty peachy color, which I think goes well with the blue eyeliner. And then I always do the same with blush and, and wipe it off, basically. <laughs> Not like completely, but like a good amount because I don't wanna look crazy. I'm gonna go into the Sugar Peach Too Faced palette, which is literally destroyed. And I'm gonna use this color called Peach Pearl. It's really pretty. It's just really intense. So I gotta be a little bit light-handed with it. Now I'm gonna look like a greasy chicken, which I kind of already do. Especially when I use that glow oil. It's like, okay, bitch, relax. You're fucking shining bright like a diamond and you need to simmer it down. I do the same thing with highlighter though. I go in and I wipe it off. So I don't know. I just like have an obsession with wanting everything to be blended in and not look crazy. And I think it works. Like when I wipe off every layer a little bit, it looks a lot more like cohesive. I'm going to go over with ColourPop's collab with, oh shit, it rubbed off. Sarai, question mark? Oh fuck, whatever. The color's called Drippin' and this is like their ultra glossy lip formula. And I'm just gonna hit that in the center. I wouldn't say that their ultra glossy lip formula is ultra glossy, but it is a very, very nice formula and I like it a lot. Oh my God, I was about to say we're done, but I forgot to do the bottom of my eye. Okay, I'm just gonna do this super quick. I'm gonna go into the Taurus and I'm just gonna smoke that on my bottom lash line really quick. I'm gonna go in with my new favorite brush to smoke out the lower lash line and this is Crown Pro Brush C528. And I'm gonna go into that same gratitude color that we put in our outer corner and tap off a little bit actually first and then go in and kind of like smoke this out. I don't want it super smoked out or anything like that. I just want it to like have some definition to it. I'm gonna go into the same highlight shade that we used from the Sweet Peach palette and grab that on my pinky and put it in my inner corners. I do this pretty much with every look I've ever done. I just feel like it opens my eyes up so much more and then I'm going to put some mascara on my bottom lashes and then we are done. Okay, so now we're all done with this look. I'm going to spray some more of this Spellbinder super intense spray. I have to hold it like super far away from my face. 
Oh, smells awful, stings my eyes. <laughs> okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. I got a lot of questions on how I do this look. It is super easy other than like super finicky fucking blue eyeliner. And I know that's the biggest part of the look, but you can't really skip it. You just have to work with it, especially if you're gonna use the same eyeliner that I used. It's a little bit of a bitch to work with. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you next time. Bye.